In this recording, I am going to be talking about how our thoughts create our reality using an example of what happened to me when I first started driving for Postmates delivery service. This example will show you why it is so, so important, if not the most important thing we do, to manage our mind. Our brain thinks 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day, and so many of those thoughts we are completely unaware of because they are so automated, because that's just what our brain does. Like, can you even think about all the thoughts you've had all day? You can't because it's just so, so many of them. And when we are completely unaware of those 60 to 80,000 thoughts, we just kind of automatically react to things, but it's important to observe and discover what our mind thinks because these thoughts are what create our emotions that drive those actions that we take. So the brain's job is to make things efficient, basically. It creates these pathways that make it easier and easier to reach for automated thoughts so that you don't have to use as much brain power thinking. It's just automatic. So when it sees a repeat in our circumstances and we think something over and over and over, it becomes this subconscious belief. And then our brain will actually go looking for evidence to back that belief up over and over again so that it stays efficient, so that it stays in this automated pathway that it's created for you. So you know kind of how you don't see your car anywhere until you buy one and then you see it everywhere? It's kind of the same for our thoughts. So if you think you suck at life or people don't love you or if you think you're amazing or brilliant, your brain will find you examples. And it will just build up until you don't even realize what your problem is. So here's this example I'm going to use with my recent story driving for Postmates. I just want to share this with you guys to kind of show how this comes true in real life. Several weeks ago, I lost about 90% of my income sources due to all the changes happening to the current world situation with the coronavirus, and so I joined a meal delivery service called Postmates to try to make some extra cash. I had just started Lyft only a month before, but I had to stop that because of everything going on. There wasn't enough rides anymore. And I was still adjusting to those changes. So I get crazy anxiety whenever I start a new job, especially one that puts a little bit of pressure on me to meet expectations. So any service business, which is pretty much everything that I've ever done, it's just a lot of pressure for me. So I signed up for Postmates over a week before I actually went out for my first drive. Because my anxiety comes from typical thoughts that come up over and over again for me that usually stem back to one core thought of I'm not good enough. So this core thought or belief kind of ignites these ruminating types of thoughts such as what if I can't deliver their food on time? What if I drop their food? What if I can't make enough money doing this? What if this is too hard? What if it doesn't pay good enough? What if, Like all the what ifs, right? And I usually heavily research something to avoid all these mistakes before getting started because perfectionism is my strong point. <laughs> it comes out to play a lot in situations like this. So most days that I thought about getting started, I kind of fought with the thoughts of this won't pay enough, this is a waste of time, what's the point? Because I looked up the average salary, because like I said, I do research, and I knew that even driving full-time would most likely not cover all of my expenses at that salary. So when I thought, what's the point? I feel like giving up, right? Like, when you think, what's the point? Like, you don't want to do it anymore. And then what do I do from there? How do I act when you feel, like, helpless or, well, what is the feeling when you want to give up? It's like, just depressed. I don't know. So how do you act when you feel like that? Most likely I either do give up or I force myself to go do something anyways and then beat myself up the whole time and think about how stupid this is and how it's not paying and totally bring that energy into the job. And then I usually prove myself right. Um, so I'd been doing a lot of work on myself and I knew that this could be 
my only option for the time being, so I decided, what can I do to make this job more worthwhile? And I pulled my Facebook community asking if they would love to receive a little positive quote with their meal if they had ordered food out, because that was a thought, that was the idea that came to my mind when I chose to think the question, what can I do to make this more worthwhile, instead of continuing to focus on those negative, well, what if it doesn't pay, and what if it... Um, and I got mixed answers to that, so that didn't really confirm or deny my thought, so some people thought, no way, because of the virus and sanitary issues, but some thought that they would love it. So I can't please everyone. I decided that if people are ordering food out, then they must not be that worried about sanitary issues, and also, the food bag is touched by me to deliver it and all the people at the restaurant, so what harm is done if I tape a card that I wrote with freshly washed hands on the outside of the bag? So I decided to do that. Um, so on the first day of my job, that's exactly what I did, and it helped me really overcome the anxiety and the negative thoughts of this isn't worth it because it gave the job some purpose. So I could remove my focus from the small amount of money that it would earn and put my focus on... I might make someone's day today, or I'm encouraging people instead of this job sucks and doesn't pay good. And it made it so much more enjoyable and easy to do. And I was able to smile at everyone and not just rush around trying to get it over with, because that just makes it a miserable experience for yourself, right? So I came home and I decided that that day was a success. And how do we decide what a success is and what isn't. Because what defines success exactly? What makes a day successful or not? A lot of us, including me, often come up with this definition or this story of what success is, and then we feel like a failure if we don't meet this definition for ourselves. But the only thing that really defines success is our thoughts. It's our thoughts about it. That's exactly it. So we have so much control over feeling successful or not. So considering I haven't earned $10 an hour in a long time, normally I would have considered that a waste of time, a pointless job, stupid, and not good enough, which is really interesting to have the not good enough thought because I'm going to bring this up again later and explain, so pay attention to that one. Um, so that's a pretty unsuccessful day, if you ask me, right? Three hours of work for $10 an hour before car and gas costs, like, but... For someone who was only making $7 an hour before, this is probably an amazing job, right? So how is it both an amazing job and a shitty job? It, because it really just depends on your perspective and the way you're thinking about it. But of course I'm thinking about it that way if I'm used to earning way more than that per hour. And of course they are thinking about it the other way if they're used to not earning that yet. So it's really only a success or failure based on how we think about it. And obviously our circumstances influence our thoughts, but we still have a choice over what we think. So that day I could have chosen to think that the job is not good enough, which is funny because my main struggle with my mind is feeling not good enough as a recovering perfectionist and people pleaser. So isn't that interesting? I invite you to take note of yourself and dig deep next time you find yourself thinking something negative and critical um, about a circumstance, person, job, etc., because you might often find that the critical thought that you're thinking about it might be related to the issue that you have deep inside, because my go-to thought is, this isn't good enough, oh, this won't work, this isn't enough, this isn't enough, when my very core self-esteem struggle is, I'm not good enough. Isn't that insane? It's just crazy to me. So I hope you're following me so far. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but Going back to the Postmates story, I got to decide if I went out there and failed by not having all the right gear and by not making as much money as I read online that you can make. Like, I could have decided that it was just a total failure, or I could decide that it was a success because I gave out nice notes to people and I encouraged them, and I even got the pleasure of hearing someone say, oh, I love this, when they picked up their bag while I was walking away. And it's my first day, and I learned how things work. I got a tip from someone, and I pushed through my anxiety that had been holding me back for over a week. So, see, I could have chosen either direction to go with that, and based on which one I choose to think is going to direct how I feel. So it's really all our thoughts. And that day, I was able to observe my anxious thoughts and self-depreciating thoughts and negative thoughts 
and focus on the good things that did happen, even though I didn't earn what I would have liked. And therefore, I enjoyed the three hours that I drove, I went home feeling good, and then I moved on to other things to do with my day. And I was a little bit sad seeing the income I made, but I was able to feel that and just be accepting of it, and I I made the choice then and there to focus on the good things that came out of it. And I don't always do this, right? Like, I'm using this as an example because it's really interesting to see what happens next. But obviously, if I didn't go drive for a week, there are definitely seven days where I was letting my negative thoughts get the best of me and they were just preventing me from even trying. So here's where the story gets really good. I let all that go. I got to feel good in the meantime and move on to other things over the next few days. And guess what happened? This like trickle of tips came in one by one from each of my customers, making my new salary for that day that I drove add up to $20 an hour. Boom, just like that. And this whole time I could have been aggravated, angry, or I could have been happy and just moving on with my life. And then in the end of it all, I made $20 an hour instead of $10 an hour. Thank you to all of those customers who did that, by the way. So I do believe in some law of attraction stuff. If you haven't heard of that, you can go look it up. It's a really interesting theory. Well, they call it a law. It's a law, really. Um, but I don't think that me being mad for three days about my salary would have changed this result because I was happy the day that I drove. So I don't think that because I chose to think positive thoughts that all of a sudden everyone tipped me over the next three days. But I do think that because I was in a good mood when I delivered that, that energy caused other people to feel more in a good mood and then caused them to end up giving me tips over time. And on top of that, all the meantime that I was waiting for those tips, I was able to be in a good mood instead of just frustrated by thinking that this was stupid and a waste of time. Because that basically, all that would have done was ruin those three days for, of mine in between getting the tips and not. Because I actually have an opposite example of this. I have been recently hired by an old client of mine for cleaning, which pays way better than Postmates. But I need about four to five days a week in order to afford my rent right now if I can't find roommates, which I have not yet. So... She called me to tell me she only needed me three days this one week and it literally led to an emotional breakdown because I didn't stop and breathe and observe my thoughts. So I just kind of let them run away with themselves, get married, have baby thoughts, and just make my life miserable. So I was freaking out and I was mad and I was thinking I'm going to lose my home and my income and all this negative spiral was going on and then I thought I should drive Postmates. Should is a dangerous word, by the way. I do not like it. I think it would be really great if everyone removed should from their vocabulary because there is no situation in which should feels good. It always is a negative, fear-driven word that just makes you do things because you should. And it's it's not good. It doesn't come from a good feeling place. So... I was thinking things like, I should drive Postmates, or I have to drive Postmates. No, technically, I don't have to. There's consequences always, but you never have to do anything. And I didn't want to, and I was miserable. So that day, I was in a bad mood. I was having emotional breakdowns. I didn't want to do Postmates. I was letting all the stupid, this is doesn't pay, this is ridiculous, thoughts run away with themselves and just having an awful time. But I ended up forcing myself to do it anyways which doesn't usually end well. So I forced it. I forced myself to do it after several hours of self-protesting. And guess what happened? I had my app on for three hours and I got one call. One call, guys. I made $7 in three hours. And I was absolutely miserable, like feeling awful all day, just totally giving up on life. Now, granted, I was at home while the app was on waiting for rides so it wasn't a complete waste of time but that I can say in retrospect the day of I was just feeling awful all day and just giving up and guess what happened the next day the lady changed her mind and told me I could come four days that week so basically I spent all that time and energy worrying and freaking out for nothing and just ruined a perfectly 
good day. Now, that's okay. It's in the past. At this point, if I focus on the fact that I ruined this whole day, like it doesn't serve me to be upset with myself for wasting that time. It's just to point out how interesting it is that we can totally wreck ourselves for no good reason with our thoughts. Like, sure, I didn't think that I was going to get four days with her that week, so I was freaking out, and I didn't know where my other money was going to come from, but I wasn't staying in the moment. Like, I just got to breathe, and it's going to be fine, and have faith that things are going to work themselves out one way or another. And um, so I think it's interesting that that's what happened on the day that I wasn't having good thoughts. So... At this point, it doesn't serve me to be upset with myself for wasting that time, but it's just an observation of how we can totally make ourselves happy or miserable just by what we allow ourselves to think about and focus on. So I think it's super important, and am I, I'm learning a lot about this myself, to really, really study ourselves in our automatic feelings and reactions to have a better understanding of what's going on for us. So like when we feel a certain way or react a certain way, we gotta like step back and be like, okay, What's going on? What am I thinking that caused me to respond this way? What am I thinking about this that caused me to act this way? And by doing that, we can kind of get an idea of where our thought process is. It's taken me years, years of self-help books and mistakes to get into this self-aware point that I am in. And I'm still fighting my same old perfectionistic and rejection, I'm not good enough types of patterns. But now that I'm aware of that and that, that I know that that's my story I like to tell myself, I can love it by understanding where it came from, accepting myself where I am, and then proceeding to choose some different thoughts. Because a lot of times when we find out what our thought is, we're like, whoa, why do I think that? That needs to just go away. I don't want it to come up anymore because that doesn't serve me. And then we kind of use it as ammo to beat ourselves up even more, which is funny because that's not the point. Um, it's The point is to accept them. So I want to make it super clear that the most important part, really, of this is accepting your thoughts as they are before you can change them. Because we have to be understanding towards ourselves like we are towards our friend or we're just going to keep adding to that fire you know so like if you find out like me when I found out that my story and pattern I tell myself is I'm not good enough well when that comes up for me I can either be like oh my god no I don't want to feel this I don't want to feel this I don't want to feel this it needs to stop I need to just ignore it I need to get it to go away it needs to go away now if we resist it it really stays longer it sticks around, and then it's like, look at you, now you're getting mad, you're just not good enough, you can't handle this, black. And, but if we can be understanding towards it, like we are towards our friends when they're going through something, um, it works a lot better, and, and it goes away a lot faster, because this is not an excuse. Knowing what our thoughts is, is not an excuse to get mad at ourselves about our thoughts. Our thoughts do not define who we are as people. Uh, they totally come from something that happened in our life and if we can figure that out we can be more understanding towards ourselves so the point is to be aware and accepting because you can only move on to different thoughts from a loving place like if I resisted my thoughts all day the day that I had that breakdown like I didn't want to feel this I didn't want to feel scared I didn't think I should feel scared I think I needed to like get over it and like figure it out and you know I was just mad at myself for being upset and then I was mad at myself for not having faith that it would work work out and therefore I was making myself doubly as upset and overwhelmed by not just accepting the negative thoughts I was having in the first place so acceptance means like being okay with our thoughts how they are like of course I think I'm not good enough if that's what I heard as a child like that's the most molding part of our life and if I heard and saw examples where I thought I wasn't good enough as a child that's gonna stick and it's gonna be deep so of course I would feel that way. Like perfection, those perfectionist people pleasing tendencies of mine served me when I was a child because those are what I did to get my needs for attention met. That's what I, you know, that's how I got my love. Like I figured out a way to get rewards and love and attention by pleasing the people around me. 
So now my brain has a pattern of that and it's just thoughts and it's okay. And if I resist that, then it, it really just gets worse. But if I just let them be and I allow myself to feel that need to please and then, um, you know, not let it overwhelm me, but also don't resist it and I just be okay with the fact that I feel that way, then I can move on and then I can step into choosing a better feeling thought and start to build up from there. So I hope that that makes sense to you guys. And I hope you find this helpful and interesting. If you would like some help trying to figure out your thoughts and your patterns that you tend to fall into, I am available for coaching and I am accepting clients. So please feel free to reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to hear from you guys. And also, if you found this helpful and interesting, I would super, super, super appreciate a comment, like, subscribe, and it would be so helpful for me if you guys shared this video and my YouTube channel with other people who you think would like it. I would love to hear from you guys. Have a great day.